Toastmasters. You are now in a training program. This is not a lecture. It only works if you participate. And what do I mean by participate? Share your thoughts. Keep your video open. Use the reactions. Put the ch questions in the chat. And that way is the only way we learn by participating. But before I do that, let me run a quick poll to find out who is my audience. Are you a trainer by profession or you train as a hobby? You aspire to be a trainer or you just happen to be in this meeting. You have no interest to be a trainer. I'm happy to see quite a number of y'all aspire to be a trainer. And for y'all, you are in the right place. There are a couple of trainers by profession and they will help us and me to guide this session properly. There are those who training as a hobby and you will learn some skills today to help you. And I'm so happy to learn that you either have an interest in training or you are a trainer. So today my module is delivering training. This is part of the train the trainer program where we cover a lot of aspects of how to become an effective trainer. This is just one of the modules where we have already identified our audience, we have identified the requirements and we are ready to deliver the training. And in this session, we will cover what's the best way of delivering the training. Those of you who have uh, not met me before, my name is Kajitan Barito. I am a certified trainer, but it doesn't pay my bills. I am in the second category where I train as a hobby and hopefully take it to the next level very soon where it will pay my bills. I am a passionate photographer, scuba diver, kettlebell trainer and generally anything related to tech, that's what I do. And for the last one year, I have been creating a lot of YouTube videos and that's why you see all this YouTube kind of stuff here. And my channel is called Tech for Toastmasters. If you haven't checked it out, please do so. Don't forget to subscribe. To get the best out of this training, please keep your microphone muted. Use the reactions and the chat as much as possible. And use the speaker view to get the most out of this training. And what do I mean by speaker view? On the top right corner, there is an option called view. Click on that and choose the speaker view. That way you will be able to read whatever I'm presenting. What are the objectives of this today's session is how to deliver a planned training session. You have already planned it, but how to deliver it is what we will learn. How to manage your learning environment and to demonstrate effective communication skills. Let's get on it with it. So a small exercise to get us started. There are different training methods for learning and teaching. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put up my whiteboard and I hope you can read the seven training methods that are listed here. And they are, you learn by teaching others, you learn using audiovisual or lectures, or discussions, reading, demonstration, or you practice doing it. Now what I want to do is I want you to tell me in the chat. So what I want to do is in the here I want to place the least effective training and here I want to place the most effective training and I will create it like a ladder here. So among the seven I want you all to tell me which would be the least effective training method in this seven methods that are listed and which would be the most effective training method. Most effective is practice doing. So somebody is saying most effective is practice doing. So let me move it there. Do every, Okay, somebody is saying teach others. Who agrees with teach others as the most effective training? That means this one teach others is the most practice doing okay there is a debate here 
between Najwa and others. Okay, what would be the least effective where you deliver the training but the retention is lecture is the least effective. Can we try and arrange the rest? Let's say after the lecture, what would be the next least effective? Reading is the next one. Okay. Does this seem like a okay structure? Is there any change that you all would like to suggest? Uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, maybe correct it if it is wrong. Lecture, then demonstrate. Okay, so somebody is saying lecture, then demonstrate. So you are saying that reading is more effective than demonstration. Okay, let's see whether, let's keep it like this for the time being. And uh, let's see what some of the research has to tell us. So this is called the learning pyramid, which says that the most effective form of training is to teach others. Right? You learn and I can assure you I am speaking about this from experience. Two weeks ago when I was told by DTM Wafa that I should be giving a module on delivering training, I did not know much about this subject. But now I was forced to train others, which means I had to learn everything to the minute detail. So when you have to teach others, that's the time when you learn the most. The lectures is the least effective in terms of retention and the percentages are listed there. It's like something like 5%. Reading gives you around 10% retention. Audiovisual, uh, for example, watching video or uh, listening uh, increases to 20%. Demonstration retention is 30%. Discussions makes it up to 50%. When you practice doing, like internship, it goes up to 75%. And as I said, 90% is when you teach others. But of course, all, we cannot be teaching others all the time. It's just not effective or it is not just practical. So what are we going to do is, first of all, to understand the different training methods, we will look at the considerations for choosing the right training method. First of all, you have to consider the training goal. What is it that you are trying to do? Are you trying to build new skills, something that the person doesn't know anything about? You'll have to take that into consideration. Or are you teaching new techniques for old skills, something a new update has happened to a product and you want to teach only that update? Then the training method would differ. So your training goal will define your training method. Are you focusing on better workplace behavior? This would require training on soft skills because you want to have better communication, better dialogue in the workplace. So again, the goal will define what kind of training you want to deliver. Are you focused on training for a safer workplace? In which case, Things like drills, demonstrations, actual practice would be the right way to do it. Or are you trying to train for a fair and equal workplace? Again, the goals determine the type of training techniques that we will use. What about your audience? Who's your audience? Are they new employees? They will require a different kind of training. Or are they seasoned employees? Again, the training techniques will differ. Or are you training for the upper management where the focus, the training, the atmosphere, the environment will have to be changed to match those needs. So the goals and the audience determine the type of training that we will deliver. Other considerations that we might want to consider is, what's your budget? Are you giving training in a small training room in, the, in your company or are you taking them to a five-star hotel where you have access to good food, good atmosphere and good facilities? What's the time allotted? Are you talking about 
a short training are you talking about a full day training what are the logistics required to conduct that training so that will also determine what can you include from all of those training techniques that i talked about what kind of resources do you have do you have the best equipment available or are you forced to deliver your training with primitive equipment so considering this we can broadly categorize training methods into first of all the instructor led training something that we have gone through in our life a classroom based instructor led hands on training is where you actually learn by doing things like an internship and now very popular these days is actually the, these are two separate training methods computer based training and online training but you know in this day there is hardly this concept of computer based training where you, you would insert uh, let's say a cd rom in a computer and you would complete your training those days are gone now everything has sort of moved into an online training platform so i have combined them together and what i would like you all to do now because you have all experienced this training right you all have attended a school college and uh, different workshops you have attended classroom or instructor led training you have done hands on training you all are all experienced people and i'm sure most of you have done online training so i want now and uh, as you know your audience have experienced trainers and uh, hobby trainers and of course there are some who are um, aspiring to be trainers i want you to share your experiences and i am going to give you 15 minutes for this activity okay i will be breaking you up into three groups and what will be the objective of this activity you will have exactly 15 minutes three groups and you will create a powerpoint presentation actually you will create a google slide presentation because it's easier to do it because i don't want you all to worry about powerpoint i will be sharing you the link i have created a template like this where you define the features of the training method for your group that you will be moved into what are the advantages of the training method for example if you are talking about instructor led training list some of the features of instructor led training you can create multiple slides if you want it's uh, normal google slides list some advantages of that training and some disadvantages very simple next within those 15 minutes identify who will be the presenter you have to present your findings afterwards so one of you will be actually presenting the results uh, and you will i'll give you 2 to 3 minutes to present it okay so the is is it clear to you i will move you into the breakout room form a group immediately find out first of all who will present this let's collect all the information start sharing it i will put the link for you to start typing it into the uh, google slide and then at the end of 15 minutes automatically the room will close you come here you give us your views and your thoughts on those three training methods classroom or instructor led hands on and cbt so room 1 is classroom room 2 is hands on and room 3 is online so some rooms will have 5 and one room will have 4 Okay I will come to your room and I'll share the link to this Google slide for you all and make sure that you all are able to but be, while you are in the room uh, start your discussions room 1 instructor led training room 2 hands on training room 3 online training Welcome everyone Let's start with room 1 instructor led training who's the presenter Professor Salman The floor is all yours please watch my video uh, i'll be the timer for you 2 uh, to 3 minutes max and let me share my screen so instructor led training uh, when we started this before corona all the training depends on the, the the type of training like the business soft skills whatever it was instructor led training so the feature uh, for this kind of training it's direct like there is a trainer and there are students so there are classroom environment of the classroom there is trainers 
and there are classroom classmates. The instructor will lead the training depends on the objectives, the outline. So the instructor will take the training from the beginning till the end. The instructor may use different methods like presentation, video audio, a group discussion, a case studies, exercises and activities, and it'll be very interactive and, and engaging. Now, what are the advantages of such training? First of all, it's face-to-face -face interaction. So the trainer is there, the, 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 the attendees are there, so there is an interaction face-to-face. -face. There is an engaging. The trainer can ask questions, the students can uh, reply by the answer, and so on. It's adaptable, and this is very important. Something can change, and as a trainer, when you are seeing that the students are lost in some areas, or they know that particular uh, uh, part of the topic, so if they know it, you can move fast on it. If they don't know some, some areas, you can extend the time. So you can adapt the, the length, you can adapt the content, you can add in new things, because it's life. You are there, they are there. If they need to ask something, they need to learn something, then it will happen. Um, there's this distraction-free environment because we are in the classroom. So you're not at work, people will come to call you, uh, you will get a call, etc. So you are in a classroom and you are living that moment of taking the training. Uh, monitoring level of trainees, the trainer can monitor the level if they understood they need extra. So the level of the trainees will be monitored directly by the trainer and there is an immediate feedback on spot. They can give a feedback if they got it or not, or, and they will give an evaluation at the end. Now the disadvantage, uh, when you are an employee and you are, you are sent to a training, it's you are, you are taking away from your work. So they will send you out, that's one. A uh, few learners at one time, so the classroom will not uh, uh, fit for all. It costs, it costs money if you are there or at tra travel. It needs a specific time. If you missed it, you missed it. And different time zone, if you are in different countries, then it will be a travel and whatever. So it's not easy because you need to be physically fit. These are the find out that we got them as a team. I was just writing and presenting. Back to you. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you for sharing that and uh, summarizing your team effort. Let's move on to team two. Who's the presenter for team two? So for hands-on training, the advantages of hands-on training is they are more focused. This is the first one. No, key feature first. Key features of hands-on training. First of all, it's an easy way to transfer knowledge because it happens in the place where you work on. Also, it helps career improvement because people who deliver the training are people who are already working with you. It's an informal way of delivering training. It's not formal, so you are not afraid of getting the training or conducting the training. Also, it's an opportunity for mentorship and apprenticeship. Again, because it's hands-on training, it happens in the place that you already work in. So it's a safe and social learning environment. Also, it improves curriculum retention because people still there, they don't come and go. And it's exper exper experiential learning, it's learning by doing. So as you know that there are many types of learning and a kinetic people or people who are doing things, it will be an, a strong way to keep or to preserve the, the thing that you learned. The advantages of hands-on training, more focus, because you are there, you are doing what you are doing, then you are more focused about doing it. It's similar on one-on-one on -one coaching. It encourages participants to freely raise questions and encourages interaction. It's more fun. It's in a confined place, so it's more fun. It allows exploration of all five senses. You can read, you can listen, you can do whatever you do, and participants can learn faster. But the disadvantages of hands-on training, it might be challenging for some people with different learning styles. For some, grasping concepts while doing them can be tough. Those who prefer reading might have difficult times with hands-on training and may not be successful. 
Also, hands-on training can be difficult when a trainee makes some mistakes because you are very exposed and you are in your own place. And most organizations don't provide financial supports on hands-on training as the resources required might be more costly. Thank you and back to you. Excellent. And I like your innovative way of delivering the training with your screen and your camera in the same screen. Well done, team two. Team three, online, the new world, the new era. Who is going to deliver that training? Okay, we're th we talked about computer-based and online training. The main features were that we use virtual meetings. Uh, they use virtual meetings. Um, there is self-registration. You need to register yourself. It uses different applications and platforms. Also, audio, video demonstration. It's most of the time user friendly. It could be recorded, it could be shared. It uses different um, digital resources, and sometimes you need to be tech savvy. It is also convenient, self paced, and standardized. Now, the advantages of the online uh, training, if it was delivered effectively, first of all, it's less time consuming. It's accessible to everyone internationally or even within the same area. Um, any special keynote speakers, any important famous people uh, can join anytime. It is cost effective. Um, it has higher engagement and retention rates. It shares, you can share resources easily digitally by just sharing a link in the chat. You can have larger amount of people to attend your meeting without worrying about the physical uh, area. And you have, you can also um, have different multiple assessing platforms to use. So if you're training and you need the feedback, you can use different platforms to um, take back your feed to um, check how much they know. Um, and it's computerized checking and feedback, which means it's less time for you to send the feedback and check the answers. Online training courses can be taken anywhere and anytime and everywhere if it was delivered effectively. If not, you feel disconnected. And uh, especially if you have internet issues, you might miss half of the training or hear nothing. You will lay, uh, lack body language, which helps us understand more. You, there's no hands-on activities most of the time, and it's less engaging and easily distracted. You can feel informal because you're sitting in your comfort zone in your in your uh, home or any office, and that will um, easily uh, deprive you from the exciting experience you get in a formal training somewhere else physically. Thank you. Brilliant job done by all teams, and truly, I divided you randomly. I did not want to have like all experienced trainers in different rooms, uh, and it turned out that. The important lesson I think that you should take from this is that a real training is not about teaching you all, but you all learning among yourself. And this is what the demonstration is all about today. You actually know all of these things, but once you sit in a uh, group, you discuss, you learn from each other, and I become basically just a facilitator in this, in this whole scenario. Excellent. Well done. I will take a few more minutes and I will go right up to 8.50 even. So I have eight minutes. I will try to use it. So as you noticed, if you can switch back to your speaker view if you are not already on it, is that generally it will require the use of a board to write your material. Overhead projector sometimes is good because actually you, it allows you to write on the overhead projector but nowadays it's all taken over by as you know powerpoint you can include video portion in your instructor-led training powerpoint presentation is the choice now for most uh, uh, instructor-led training when you want to demonstrate something and one in interesting aspect of uh, instructor-led training is the inclusion of stories sharing personal stories, getting the message across more powerful. What are the advantages? You have already um, listed them. It's efficient, it's personal, it's face-to-face. -face. It's the same information to everyone. 
right? Because you are all in that same room. It's very cost effective and storytelling grabs attention. So these are the things. Of course, whatever you have seen said in your presentation is all right. But these are some of the main aspects of an instructor-led training. The disadvantages as li listed by you, it's, it's not as interactive as, for example, a hands-on training, right? Because you are sitting in the classroom most of the time. It highly depends, the effectiveness depends on the trainer. So if the trainer is not good, maybe the training will not be good. Scheduling becomes extremely difficult in an instructor-led training because you have to manage different rooms, different timings. How can you make it better? Have programs like this where you train the trainer on the right way of delivering training. Give the right resources to the trainers. Use interactive methods like discussions, like uh, exercises, like quizzes. And these are some of the interactive methods you could use in an instructor-led training, like a quiz, like a group discussion that you just had. Have a case study. Put a case study and discuss on that study. Ask the audience to create summary of what they have learned. Have a Q&A session. Make sure that they have grabbed all the information. Ask them to write questions on a question on a card and then try to solve that. Role play is also very effective. Create case studies, case role play and learn from that uh, interaction. Give participants the control. Let them come on the stage and, and demonstrate something. And of course, finally, have some demos in the training room. For those of you who did hands-on training, again, amazing job. These are some of the points that you should note down. First of all, it's cross-training. Like uh, you, you are doing one job, you could be giving hands-on training on another job. That way you learn and you are a backup for somebody else in the company. It it's involves demonstrations, actual demonstrations, physical demonstration, coaching one-to-one, -one, as you have already mentioned in your presentation drills like safety drills what are the advantages this is like whenever you have new procedures new equipment hands-on training is the best way to um, achieve the results it's immediate again all of you have mentioned this feedback is immediate because if you do hands-on training and you do the work right you know that you have learned it correctly the Disadvantage, of course, is it's not practical for large groups. You can only do it for smaller groups. It is time consuming. It's expensive. And finally, online training. What are the aspects of it? It's now all web based. You can use teleconferencing. You can use audio conferencing. You can use video conferencing or a mixture of all of them. It involves online meetings, webinars. This is all that is becoming very popular these days and universities for example do distance learning uh, university degrees using online training what are the advantages it's effective for multiple locations, as you mentioned geography is not a limitation anymore anywhere in the world you save money on travel use for refresher training like you know something but you just want a refresher just do an online training and get updated it's self-paced it's up to you how and you can match the training to the skill so when you want to learn something you select only that training you don't waste your time on the spot the disadvantages of course is you need to be computer literate it is very impersonal in nature logging into the computer learning by yourself you need proper hardware so that uh, you get the full benefit of the training and some people they get intimidated by the technology learning through and those who of your toastmasters will relate this to pathways so the right approach is there is no right approach as i said in the beginning we talked about the goals the audience and then you learn all of this and what's the right approach the right approach is to blend all of this together to make sure that uh, depending on the situation, depending on the budget, depending on the location, you bring the right tools and then you engage the audience and make sure 
that your training is delivered. I have gone three minutes beyond my time and I hope you found this session useful. The time, in my opinion, at least where I was sitting, it just flew by. I hope you found something valuable in this session. Thank you so much. Back to you, Toastmaster of the Day.